with Faraz Shaukadali. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. My guest tonight is Mr. Eran Wickramaratna. Sri Lanka's crisis is deepening. Sri Lanka's people continue to be troubled. The local government elections may well be held soon. There are attempts to stall this, but let's ask Mr. Eran Wickramaratna what his party has got to say about all of this. Very good evening to you, Mr. Vikramaratna. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now then, Thank you. Sri Lanka's crisis is really deepening. The calls for elections are growing. And there's been various announcements, and it looks like local government polls will be held, although there are uh, sort of attempts to stall it. Why do you think that is? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, the country is in a crisis. And uh, when the country is in a crisis, uh, sometimes we begin to think that uh, we need to resolve the crisis. That's what should take priority. And uh, so whether it's a you know, petrol queue, gas queue, it's a shortage of food, or maybe drugs, medicines, mm. whatever, that, that should be the focus. And of course, that should be, because th that's the priority. But uh, in solving that, right, uh, you have two broad options. One option is in the democratic framework. Yeah. The other option is <coughs> basically in a more totalitarian framework. Uh, these are to do with values. And the values that Sri Lanka has stood for is a democratic value. Mm. Uh, and this is not yesterday or today. This has been coming for decades on decades. Uh, there are certain, obviously, in any system of government, increased in democracy, there are negatives as much as positives. But from all known forms of government, mm. democracy is what the world largely believes in, is a, is a more acceptable form of government because people or the citizens who are being served, their views are taken into consideration and they decide who makes the decisions, including who should be their public representatives. So in Sri Lanka, democracy manifests itself. If you talk about elections, presidential mm. election, parliamentary election, provincial council election, and local government election. Mm. Unfortunately, the provincial council elections were done away with more than five years ago. And uh, we all have to take responsibility, including the government that I was in mm. at that period of time. Now, in addition to that, we have a local government election coming. Are we going to repeat the same mistake? No, we can't repeat the same mistake because that will be a huge blow to democracy. Mm. Therefore, the local government elections are due. It should be held on time. Why is there even a discussion about it? The reason for the discussion is we have a parliament which is legal but has lost its legitimacy. Most of the MPs in parliament can't even go back into their electorates to campaign for the local government candidates. And what are they trying to do as a result? They're trying to do away with elections. Indeed. Also, if elections are held, they are certainly going to have a problem because the results will show that this government is going to be rejected. And so they are making every effort to basically push back the elections. That can't be done, as you know. Uh, it will be illegal, but certainly if that attempt is there the judiciary will have to decide mm. what is constitutional, what is not constitutional, how are we going to protect the democratic framework in this country. Um, is, it, is it fair to say that the people really want to have elections, but the president and the party that uh, elected him in the majority to become the sort of temporary president to take over from President Gota Birajapaksa, that that they don't really want to have elections because uh, it would be a litmus test of their popularity or not, and that Mr. Vikram Singer um, has a precedent in terms of that uh, P R E C E tent um, because. If you remember, during uh, the Arpalane government, uh, again, there was widespread uh, uh, dissatisfaction and the provincial council elections were not held. Uh, we had the min then Minister of Provincial Councils, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, who famously said on Newsline that the proposal was delayed because there was a spell check going on. 
you know, because there were spelling mistakes. But poor Pfizer Mustafa, he, he didn't realize there's a button, it's called F7. If you're using Windows, you press F7 and it does an auto spell check for you. Anyway, so is, is that the same scenario being played out now? Yeah, it's very unfortunate uh, that the provincial council elections, on the pretext of changing the system, was actually put away. El electoral systems can change, and people should be open to change. But what we shouldn't tamper with is democracy itself. Indeed. If you want to change a system, work at it, and then go through the pro proper process, get the people's approval for it, implement it. But mm. in the process of doing that, don't make excuses about postponing elections. Mm. This is not new for Sri Lanka. In 1975, an election was due, but that election was pushed back to 1977. Everybody needs to remember, particularly elected representatives, we are elected on a certain set of rules, the constitution and a certain set of rules. We are elected for a specific period. No excuse mm. in extending that or doing away with elections <coughs> can ever be tolerated. It's unfortunate. Rani Vikramasinghe was prime minister mm. when the provincial council elections were done away with. Yeah. Nobody says this in the way I say it because they will use technical things and say we are trying to put a new system in, you know, we were trying to drop the new boundaries, etc. Et yes. But the fact of the matter is that the provincial council system basically was stopped. And now, right? A For political experience. Yeah. Yes. And, and similar discussion or similar conversations we see going in the media. And therefore, I don't think we should be ever making that mistake. Our local governments are very important. Local governments provide services. The local governments are the closest to the people in the country. But a president can't decide on that. A parliament can't decide on that. Because our issues in, in parliament are very different to the issues in local government. Mm. And therefore, local government representatives are absolutely important. And therefore, the elections must be held. The elections must be held on time. So these excuses can't get in the way. So will these excuses hold much water or will it finally end uh, with a determination by the Supreme Court? Uh, I, I personally think that uh, it's, uh, elections have been announced, nominations dates have been announced mm. and uh, it's basically now for the Elections Commission to basically say what's the date of the election. Mm. Uh, you know, the, these fundamentals in democracy must not be at the behest of politicians. Isn't it, isn't it almost uh, bordering the ridiculous that uh, 74 years after independence that Sri Lanka can't hold its elections without somebody trying to or, or petitioning the Supreme Court after God knows hundreds of elections at all sorts of levels. Isn't that crazy? For us, it's not crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. I would go one step further. I would go one step further and say, this is the right of the people. The sovereignty of the people is mainly demonstrated, not only through elections, but mainly demonstrated through elections. Uh, Sri Lankan leaders have failed this country. As I pointed out the 1975 thing, the referendum that came. Right, in different, different ways. Sometimes they have postponed it. Sometimes they have put it under commissioners mm. and so forth. I think that this discretion in the hands of leaders has been misused. I'm not saying that Ranil Vikram Singh has done it this time, mm. but I'm saying generally it has been misused. Therefore, I think elections, right, date should be predetermined. Presidential election on such and such a date. Mm. Parliamentary election is on such and such a date. Provincial council is on such and such a date. Local government is on such and such a date. And I would say, from an efficiency point of view, some of those elections could be held on the same date. Mm. We go to the polling booth, we have two ballot papers. One is for this, and one is for the other election. We vote on the same day. Indeed, that right? would be expedient. That would be expedient. And what you're efficient. saying is about the dates that need, need to be constitutionally... Constitutionally determined because... I think leaders, this country has failed. One main reason it has failed is because of political leadership. We cannot basically keep this in the hands of leaders. That is why, because this is the people's sovereign right. I think we should define it in the constitution and we should put it in the constitution. We won't be wasting time debating these things. Indeed. These things will just happen on the day. But the day. fact that these matters aren't being taken care, care of it smacks to me of departures from due process opens the doors uh, wide and wide 
for, towards corruption, um, money laundering as well. Because uh, the, um, I, I challenge uh, a lot of people uh, who have contested, contested their elections to come and show us bona fide evidence that the money that they received was actually clean, declared, taxes paid, and then it's out there in the open. I wonder how many of these parliamentarians and provincial councillors and local government officials will be able to do that. That would be a very interesting program. We can do a Newsline special. Yeah, so it's all about systems and processes. So the date of an election is also an issue of system. Hmm. You put that, that the system is in place. You are raising a very important question for us. The question you are raising is about actually election campaigns. Yes, political and, donations. And political donations. Lots of countries have laws about it. Mm. Right? Sri Lanka, unfortunately, doesn't have a law. I think that one of the things that this government should do immediately is bring in a law. The local government election is a few weeks away, so that will be impossible to implement a law. Mm. But certainly, if we bring in the law now for the general election and for the presidential election, it will become a part of the process. It's a systemic change, and the law needs to be brought in. So when this law is brought in, right, laws normally permit donations. What it does is it limits the amount of the donation. So that the and also that there is an audit trail as to who gave what. That's right. To so whom. That's right. So, so it, it reduces the amount of the donation because then the receiver or the person running for public office doesn't have to be obligated to the donor. So that's one principle that will mm. be there. Then the other is, right, it's transparent because uh, people who make donations will then can say, we have made the donation. Now, generally in this system, the problem is when you don't have a law, is somebody who's giving the money doesn't want to say who they gave the money to for two reasons. One is they don't, they, 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 particularly if they are in the private sector and they're businesses, yeah. right, they want to be seen, whoever is in power, that we have played our game evenly. So you spread your money about. You spread, your, spread your money about, that's one. The other reason is if you really say, this is what I gave, then somebody could go after and say, can you show that on your books? Where did you get that money from? Indeed. You see, so this is both sides. One is the receiver has a problem mm. and the donor has a problem. So the way to cover them all is to actually have electoral laws. So when it's given, it's legal, it's transparent, it's a small amount, and, and therefore you know that there is no obligation to the donor of it. Yeah. So I think this law is very, very overdue, yeah. and it's high time that we bring this law immediately. And I'm hoping, we have had a discussion on this, that this government will bring it in the first quarter of the year. I, I believe that your, your leader, Mr. Sajid Premadas, is also very much for this transparency. Uh, I, I remember interviewing him for a newspaper many years ago, in which, and I'm sure he has the tapes. Uh, but, uh, he, will, uh, he, he was very much for it. Um, and so perhaps, but the chance will come, won't it? Because from judging from the messages that we collect, during this program and the feedback we get, it appears that the SJB are all set for a runaway victory at the local government polls. So my question to you, Eran Wickmaratna, is what next then? And this is a local government election. So there are issues, local government issues and national issues. Mm. Uh, the country at this point in time is bankrupt. Yeah. And so at a national level, the bankruptcy affects everything. Because what it does mean is, one is on one hand is you don't have the foreign currency, yeah. and therefore even to buy your essentials, you can't pay for it, and you have a problem. The second issue that is there is government revenues have collapsed because of the policy followed by the former president, Gotabe Rajapaksa, mm. it just completely collapsed. And therefore, the government <coughs> is bankrupt, that's so you have that, that issue. So the government doesn't have money to spend. And then you have a third issue, is the economy is in crisis. So the economy, rather than growing, even if it's growing 
at 2% or 3%, which is not desirable. Sri mm. Lanka should be aiming to grow at 4% plus, mm. right? But the problem here is it's not growing. It's actually shrinking. Yeah. The Sri Lankan economy is actually shrinking. So there is a huge overall problem at the national level. So when you think about local government, we have to be realistic. It doesn't matter who gets elected, right? There will be very little resources that the central government will be able to put into local government mm. because of the national crisis, mm. right? Therefore, right, uh, the local governments generate some revenue, but the local governments have expenditures. And these expenditures largely go in for salaries, mm. largely in mm. a local government institution. And then the rest of it goes for day-to-day -day things like you know keeping the environment clean, collecting your garbage, making sure that the you know sewer process works. If it's in an urban area, mm. it may be centralized, but if it's in a rural area, still there is a sewer process. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to clean it up even though it's locally collected and so forth. So there are expenditures there. Let's, let's go to it in greater detail after this short break. Uh, we'll see the headlines from this evening's primetime news team and uh, we'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Ugly brawl between fishermen and Coast Guard officers in Hambantota. Shots fired into the air. <laughs> Police disrupt the protest march against the electricity tariff increase. Aragali Memorial disrupted. Police rush to clean the golf face green. <laughs> President Vikramasinghe reacts to the turmoil in Brazil. Three factions oppose the petition to cancel the local government election. SLPB places bonds with the local government election. Talks on an agreement between the SLPP and the UNP continue. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with the SJB senior parliamentarian, Mr. Eran Vikramaratna. Mr. Vikramaratna, what good is winning the local government elections, you know, in, in let's say with a landslide? What good, uh, other than serving as a litmus test? What can you actually do at local government? Yeah, so uh, as I said, there will be limitations because of the national economic crisis and the national economic situation. Will, is that, that the, more or is the real problem that at the national level, it's another party that's controlling parliament? Uh, it, it's both. One is there's actually a crisis at the national level mm. and the resources that could be given to local government is going to be very limited. It's a part of a having a bankrupt country, mm. which we have been pushed into. So that's on one hand, that's the overall picture. Having said that, even at local government, much can be done. And one of the first things that we are doing, and we are going through the nominations process at present, mm. we are, apart from those who have been in politics, we are looking for capable, professional, good people to be brought into local government. Right. And we must never underestimate the impact of that. And are you actively seeking such people? We are actively seeking such people. And because you asked me that question, I will say anybody hearing this, mm. if they genuinely think that they can make a contribution, yeah. right? Uh, basically at local government, we have advertised, we are asking them to please write into us or contact one of us. We would certainly like to speak with them mm. because Sri Lanka's problem primarily is a problem of people not necessarily policy. Mm. If you have the right people, it makes a huge difference in what you do. So that's one. And the other thing is, we also want to create administrations where corruption will not be tolerated. Local governments, wherever they are, if you talk to the citizen, they will say whether it's from a garbage collection, right, or basically handling the malaria mosquito, yeah. or getting a permit or an approval or a building permit past, right? they say every aspect is corrupt. So one of the things that we will insist when we look for the new people as well, first test is we have to make sure that these people have no track record of being corrupt. Because if you bring in new, new people into this, 
right? Then we, we, we have to focus on basically reducing corruption. Mm. Then the service levels, these are things that can improve. Most people will complain and say, right, oh, they told me to come, then they told me they can't deal with this now, to come next week, and so forth and so on. So whether it is basically receiving a service or getting a building permit, right, mm. there's a lot that we can do to actually improve mm. local governments. Because then beyond that, I would say that it's a question of resources. Because, uh, you know, in some local, in the, in the rural areas in particular, yeah. what assistance can be given, right, apart from the services being improved, what other assistance can be actually given at local government. So th these are going to be some of the issues. But even if you take in, in towns, for example, the administrative issues, you know, now they say for everything you run, you have to say get a letter from the Grama Sevaka and come. Indeed. And you begin to examine this. Why do you need the letter from the Grama Sevaka? A lot of this, this information now is available electronically. They can be actually established. I want to, re I want to register a uh, website. Um, the people in Morita told me that I need to get a letter from the Grama Sevaka. I, uh, I can't figure why. It's just ridiculous. Some of these things we have to relook. Processors have to be relooked because I brought that up myself because I've got so many complaints for every single thing, right? So what what are these people trying to doing? They're trying to just hide behind the fact, right, of getting a letter from the grammar saverka. I think we have to relook all of this. Well, why do you need a letter from a grammar saverka to open a website? Anybody should be able to open a website. <laughs> this is what I mean. I mean that's just totally ridiculous, right? I saw the other day in the newspaper just a suggestion saying that you know uh, social media needs to be regulated i mean we have been the victims of social media why should social media be regulated i mean i can't understand that right already there is regulation even for the media indeed right even for television stations there is yes yeah right if the government hasn't been able to even implement what it already has responsibility for are they going to take on more responsibility? What kind of crap is this? So th therefore, I think that we need to move away from all of this. You know, it, it, laws, just bringing in new laws alone won't help. Our main problem is poor leadership, poor management. How do you fix it? First principle, into your local government. Please look at it carefully. Who is actually running for office? to be the mayor or the chairman of the local government. They have a team there? Do they have a team? Who is in that team? Have you got capable people? Have you got professional people? Have you got people who understand the subject? Have you got educated people? Have you got experienced people? And then certainly make sure that there's good representation of women and youth also. The last time the uh, Parliament government tried to do that, uh, the numbers, the local numbers went up from 4,000 to 8,000. That, that sounds like a waste of money. In implementing these... And now they're trying to reverse it. They're yes. going to cost even more money. In implementing these, right, you don't have to necessarily increase numbers. Right? This is absolute nonsense. Why did we increase numbers? Because we want to protect those who are already in the system. You don't need to increase numbers. I love this. I love this message. Uh, it's just come through. And I'll, I'll read that now. All the crooks ready for elections, but not ready to avoid misusing state resources. How do we control that? You know, it seems to be like an advantage. Uh, it's advantage government. And, you know, they take that advantage and run. They, they have, I don't know, they use all sorts of things. They use even the manpower the vehicles, all sorts of things, only for an incoming government to say, oh, we're going to prosecute them, and then it gets stuck in this abyss of despair, which is also sometimes known as our uh, judicial process, because it's overloaded with all these sort of things. H how do you address, how do you begin to address these real problems? Yeah, the, these problems, are generally the abuses generally happen with those in power. Because it's those in power who can actually control resources, whoever, whichever party. Those in power only generally have access to people, they have access to funding, and they have access to vehicles, mm. and things that can be used in an election. So that's they, they seem to have a lot of access to money, as uh, evidenced by some social media 
uh, images that were published in social media uh, about um, a, a, a celebration um, held by uh, the mayor of Colombo um, when people were finding it difficult to get even one square meal. It's almost obscene. And certainly, whatever said and done, obscene or not, the optics are wrong. Wrong and wrong. Do you agree? Yeah. Uh, I think that we need to certainly have a big sensitivity because on one side you have the city of Colombo if you want to go to a major hotel you had to make a booking mm. to get a table mm. on the other side right you have people who are struggling to live right and I know this myself because uh, I, I, I have been very concerned about it and to all the uh, uh, senior citizen societies registered with government virtually to all those families in the electorate that I'm responsible for. I have basically got together with friends and relations and tried to help them. And I have seen thousands of families. And I have seen and I have been with them how difficult life is. So I completely agree with you that particularly those of us who are holding high office and responsible elected office Certainly, we need to be sensitive to that because Sri Lanka's gap between the haves and the have-nots seems to be increasing. Mm. And that's not good for any society. Mm. That's not good for any society. Therefore, we need to create a more equal society. And therefore, we will have to be very sensitive to that issue, particularly at this point in time. But, Aran Vikramatna, even if... Let's start again. Aran Vikramatna, even when the SJB wins the local government polls and then wins the parliamentary polls, let's say. What then? Doesn't mean that the prices will come tumbling down. It doesn't mean that the eggs will suddenly become 20 rupees again. It doesn't mean that the contracted economy is going to grow overnight. Is it a long hard journey ahead of us? For us, I can't uh, make it sound simple and easy because the crisis is so great. But what I can say is this, that we will certainly put the right policies in place so that we are on the right road in the right track. If you take inflation, for example, or you take the interest rates, yes. right? soaring inflation, you know, running food inflation close to 100%, other inflation close to 60%, soaring. Interest rates, 30% plus. If we get it on the right road for us, mm. I would say that in a, maybe in a two-year period, we can see fairly significant changes to the positive. Because just by doing the right thing and pursuing down the right road. And if you pursue around that right road, what are our goals? 30% plus interest rates? We have to get it down mm. to the 10%. We have to get... We need that. Yeah. We have, to, we have to get inflation down to single digits. These are not impossible, but this will take time because there are so many reforms that need to be done. But the problem is this for us. We will win the local government election, and we can do those reforms in local government, but at the national level, we can't do that. Yeah. Till we have a mandate from the people, because without a mandate, you can't take the hard decisions that you will have to take. We don't want to just make promises and come in. We know what we can do. We know that we have the team that can do it, but we also need people's approval mm. so that we can get the reforms through, because we are going to go through a difficult period to see good results. It's like this. It's like the examination. Hard work brings good results when the examiner says you've got, you pass. Hard work brings good results. Hard work on the part of our producers getting Eran Vikramatna on the program tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Eran Vikramatna. That's the way it was. It's now time for the primetime news from that wonderful primetime news team. Take care. Have a great evening ahead of you as much as you can. And, of course, God bless you all.